So last week we began looking at the biblical precept of God remembering his people. And like I said last week, I'll say again, I don't like to phrase it that God doesn't forget. I'd rather phrase it that God remembers so that we get to the place that we can with great assurance say that God remembers us. He remembers me, remembers us, remembers you, remembers his people. He remembers his covenant specifically. And so within that covenant, obviously, are his people. And from that, God will always remember and do what he said he would do in the life of his people, even if they are going through extreme difficulty and even they would need a miracle in this case. So I want to read just uh, a portion of a scripture from Genesis uh, chapter 30, because there are, there are many phrases, biblical phrases, I should say biblical stanzas throughout the Old Testament that says God remembered. Last week, again, we looked at the aspect that God remembered Noah. And there are, as I mentioned just a moment ago, I want to mention this again, throughout the, New, throughout the Old Testament, we're, we're reminded that God remembered them. When they needed a breakthrough, when they needed help, when they needed comfort, when they needed consolation, whatever it was, is that God always remembered their plight. He remembered their need. He remembered them as an individual. That's what's so beautiful. And we say this many times, and sometimes we can almost say it um, in a nonchalant manner when we say that Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, is our personal Savior. And He most certainly is, absolutely. But we need to fully understand that that means in, a, in the most minute manner that He knows everything about us. That's how personal He is with us, and that's how personal that relationship is that we have with Him, and also, obviously, with our Father in Heaven, the one and only true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as the New Testament makes very clear. So that's how personal not only Christ is with us, but that's how personal God is with us. That's how, that's how personal our God is is that he knows what we're going through and he remembers us. He remembers that we're a covenant-keeping child and that he'll come through for us, amen. So uh, Genesis uh, chapter, I think I told you, didn't I tell you, or did I tell you? I'll tell you again, Genesis chapter 30, verse 22, just reading this one verse and it says this, and God remembered Rachel and hearkened to her and opened her womb. We don't have time to develop the complete backstory of Rachel and her history. The bottom line is this. She was one of the two wives of Jacob. Her sister, Leah, and her were both married to Jacob. I do not have time to, to go into that issue about why did God allow polygamy then. Uh, suffice it to say, he did then but does it now. And uh, we're just going to leave it at that. I could go 28 different directions on that, and some would be somewhat comedic, but not go in there. Bottom line is, at that time, did. So, uh, Lee and Rachel were sisters, and the thing about it is, is that Leah was able to conceive and, and bring forth a lot of children. And this extremely distressed Rachel, because in that day and time, barrenness, not being able to produce children, barrenness was a sign of a curse. It was, it, was, it was a sign of not only fruitlessness, but futility of life. Uh, when, when a woman could not bring forth children to uh, continue that family lineage, there again, she was looked, looked upon as, as a cursed woman in many regards. Jacob did not look at her uh, whatsoever like that because the Bible even makes it clear that 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 Jacob's love for Rachel was was exceedingly great I mean he couldn't love her anymore uh, came a point in her life especially as she saw her sister having many many children eventually out of, out of great frustration out of some anger out of some angst uh, and, 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 and helplessness and hopelessness she cried out and said in, in uh, Genesis chapter 30, also at the beginning of it, she said, you know, give me children or else I die. She's crying that unto Jacob. And Jacob, you know, of course, 
he can't do anything about it. He wanted to, but couldn't. He said, you know, I'm not in the place of God. I, if I were, I would, you know, if I, if I could, I would, but I, we're doing all we can, but we're just not able to have children. So you, you, you begin to see, I mean, this utter depth of despair of Rachel saying there again, give me children or else I die. Um, and then you continue to read that 30th chapter. We get to the 22nd verse, which we just read a moment ago. And it said, and God remembered Rachel and hearken unto her or listen unto her cry and then open her womb. So let's just look at this principle for a few minutes here and continue to give us more faith, more understanding. And, and uh, with more faith, we'll have more resiliency in those times we go through in life, wondering, has God forgotten us? Has God forgotten <laughs> That I that I even exist, that 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 I'm serving Him. You know, has God forgotten what I've what I've been doing to my utmost capability by His grace to live faithfully for Him, and to and to give in so many different areas of my life. Uh, so when we understand beyond a shadow of a doubt, even though we go through difficult times, as long as we can say with great resolution, God remembers His people. Sometimes we think it takes a lot longer for God to remember us because part of that word remember, it means to also to visit his people. So, and especially when we go through tumultuous times in our life, we want that visitation to be much more readily um, and much more quickly. But the bottom line is this, God always comes through for his people, amen. Sometimes not when we think it should be and to the degree it should be, but God always does come through for his people in a wide variety of ways. So let's look at this there again. So we understand the plight, the helplessness, hopelessness that Rachel was in. She's serving God faithfully, serving her husband, serving her, you know, her extended family and doing all she can to serve God faithfully too. But she gets to this place in life, it's like, man, I, I, almost, I almost don't even want to live. You know, if, if I have to live like this, it's, 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 it's miserable for me, beyond miserable that people would ever even understand. This is what caused God to remember Rachel in this case, is that first and foremost, it says that God, when God remembered her and hearkened unto her, King James Version simply saying today, God listened to her. God heard her prayers. So don't ever think when you're praying, especially in the midst of your darkest time of night of your soul, is that God isn't hearing your prayer, that God isn't listening to what you're saying. God remembers according to your prayer life with him. He remembers according to the conversation that you have with him, pouring out your heart to him, pouring out your frustration to God. Not that you're angry at him, but you're frustrated by what's occurring in your life. That's not a sin. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. There again, you're not frustrated with God, but what has gone on in your life has brought a lot of frustration, a lot of hurt, a lot of anguish of soul, a lot of pain, um, even questions that you may have. So the thing about it is continue to talk to God. Don't stop talking to God just because things aren't going how you would like for them to go. That's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to stop conversing with God. He wants to sever that relationship you have with God through his son, Jesus Christ. He wants you to abandon the faith that you have in God, that God will remember you. So Knowing that strategy of the enemy, that's why you got to dig in that much more and stay that much more connected, that much more faithful to God and continue to pour out your requests to God. David even said this in the King James Version. This is how it's phrased. I poured out my complaint to God. You etymologize that word complaint and it means that that David, David had some complaints about life. It's simply what it means, you know. And there again, he wasn't complaining about God not doing what he needed done in David's life at that time was just complaining to the point of really, you know, not how we would say complain about, you know, mur the Bible makes it very clear, Pauline epistle, and he says, do all things without murmuring and complaining, not talking about that. But there again, of what you're going through in life, you're pouring that out. You're just, you're just emptying yourself of, of what you're going through in life. There again, the frustration, the hurts, the pain, the setbacks, the regressions, whatever it is. So that that's what Dave meant when he said, I pour out my complaint before God. I'm pouring out everything 
that is hurtful, everything that's disappointed me, everything that uh, has gone wrong or is going wrong currently in my life. So therefore, that's what David meant by that. So Rachel did that very thing. And, and what we need to understand is when we do that, when we call out to God, when we cry out to God, he remembers our prayers. That's why he remembered Rachel's plight is because she was pouring her heart out to God to the point, you know, out of anguish when she poured her heart out to her husband, Jacob said, there again, give me children or else I die. So you know, obviously, that God heard that because he hears everything, sees everything, hears everything, knows everything, even before we speak it. That's what David meant when he said that, God, you know my thoughts, my, 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 my thoughts are far off. My thoughts are far off. Almost combine those two words, but my thoughts, make that clear, afar off is that God that you, long before I even thought it, you already knew what I was going to think. Long before I thought it, you knew. So the point back to that is just real quickly, God knows what we're thinking. He knows if we're thinking from, a, from this frustrated paradigm. He knows if we're thinking from this angst-ridden paradigm. He knows that. He definitely knew that about Rachel, even before she voiced that, that's recorded in the Bible, that give me children or else I die. He knew all of that. So she, you know she'd been pouring her heart out to God in that regard. But it was from that that God listened to her. And from that, God remembered her. God remembered, he visited her in her state of plight. And notice this, what else occurred when God remembered her, visited her from her crying out to God, praying to God, asking God for help in this area, asking for a miracle, asking for a true miracle in her life, a supernatural miracle in her life. So God remembered her based upon her faith. We kind of touched on that last week with Noah. Noah, you know, he, he was moved with fear, Hebrews moved by fear, Hebrews 11 says, as we looked at that more fully, out of great respect for God, because he was warned by God of, of what he would see long before he could see it. So it was truly absolute faith, complete faith, that Noah did what he did, predicated then God remembering Noah. So Rachel, in her own way, she actually she's exercising faith for God to give her children to bring forth this miracle in her life. And there again, God remembered her not and, and, and listened to her, not just because she was praying, but she was praying by faith for a miracle that only God could do and God could perform. Then in conjunction with that, here's what happens. When God remembered Rachel, just as when God remembers you, as because he's listening to you, what he does is he opens. So he listened, to Rachel, then he opened. Now in this case, literally he opened up her literal womb and she did bring forth a child, brought forth a son by the name of Joseph. And we know how God used Joseph. So see, if you, if you could only begin to realize, if you could only begin to realize what God is gonna open in your life, it will give you more faith that God will remember you in your plight to open that which needs to be open in your life. So I wanna make it clear, from a literal perspective, God opened up her womb and she brought forth a son by the name of Joseph. Metaphorically, spiritually speaking, God will remember you and he will open that which needs to be opened in your life. That's why Jesus declared in the book of Revelation, which first is a messianic a prophecy from the book of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 22, but there again, Jesus made it very clear in that fulfillment of Isaiah 22, that I open that no man can shut. And of course I shut that no man can open because he has the keys of David, full authority over every situation in people's life throughout the world. So you understand this is that, listen, only God can open what has been closed. Only God can open what has seemingly been irrevocably shut. Only God can open what it's gonna take an absolute, resolute miracle to open. You need to understand that God will remember you and open the thing that people says cannot be open and open that opportunity that seems to have been totally lost. Open 
that divine connection that people say will never ever happen whatever it is you need to understand god will remember you at your point of need visit you and open up what you don't even think he can open up and out of frustration even some angst going on deep within your soul and spirit you're crying out god will hear that and he will open the very thing that you need open in your life and people will stand back and look and see the miraculous intervention that god brought in your life because god remembered you based upon he heard you and from that he opened the very thing that truly took a miracle to happen in your life Father, right now, I ask that you do that for God's people, for your people, God, for all the people of God. Do that in their life, Father. Begin to remember them like never before, that they will never doubt, Lord God, that, that you've forgotten them and you don't even realize what they're going through. God, remind them now that you always remember your people. You are listening to your people. You're listening to the cry of their heart. You're listening even to the frustration they have deep within their soul and there's nothing wrong with that god because we've all been pushed to the brink at one time or another but from that god as you're looking upon them through eyes of grace that you will let them know that you're listening and, and you're going to listen to the point that you're going to open the miraculous avenue in their life you're going to open oh god that which truly will take a miracle and people will see and behold that they serve a god that remembers his people. I speak that now over your people and I thank you for that even in advance. In Christ's name we pray, we all say amen and amen and amen. God bless you and God remember you because he will remember his people. I love you, you have a blessed week and um, next week we're gonna look at this in a, different, in a little different facet, a little different angle. But the bottom line is this, God remembers you. Have a great week. God bless. For more information about our teaching resources, visit our website at CICLive.com.